Let there be light. On the second day, God separated the waters from above and below the earth, creating what we call our atmosphere. On the third day, God sprinkled the sky with stars and made the sun and the moon. On the fourth, huge areas of lands rose from the sea as God divided the oceans and lands. On the fifth day, God then created the birds to populate the sky and the fish to populate the oceans. On the sixth, God created animals and his greatest creation yet. The first man, Adam. God, wanting somewhere special for Adam, sprouted streams and planted a garden for him in the east, which he called Eden. God placed Adam in the garden to care for the land and plants. He gave Adam complete dominion over all animals, but warned Adam, You shall not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day that you eat of it, you will surely die. As Adam continued to work the land, God saw that Adam was lonely, so sent all of the animals to him to find a helper. Adam couldn't find a suitable fit, so God put him in a deep sleep to create the perfect helper from his rib. When God created Eve, she woke up in paradise. Unlike Adam, she hadn't seen God create the Garden of Eden. But she saw the beauty in everything, from the trees to the flowers. Adam had only told her of God's warning about the Tree of Life. Her days were blissfully spent busy, looking after all of the animals and all of the land. But there was one animal still waiting to meet her. When he finally had his chance, the snake began to manipulate Eve and told her, You can eat from any tree in the garden, so eat from the one in the middle, and you will be like God. Eve, tempted by the devil, took a fruit from the tree and gave a piece to Adam. In that moment they realized they were naked and heard the sound of God. What is this that you have done? God, furious at the devil's manipulation, cursed him along with Adam and Eve and banished them from the Garden of Eden, placing a cherubim angel to guard the entrance so they could never return. Adam and Eve wandered the deserts for many years, trying to find a suitable home amongst the sand and wind. When they finally did, God had blessed them with their first child. As Eve gave birth to Cain, she prayed, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Years later, they gave birth to another son, Abel. They played together in the desert as any two children do. Adam, with his knowledge from Eden, taught Abel how to look after the animals, and Cain how to work the land as a farmer. Years had passed, Abel now a great shepherd, and Cain became an incredible farmer. They would regularly offer gifts to God together. One day God took favor on Abel's offering over Cain's. God, knowing Cain's anger, warned him, Sin is crouching at your doorstep, you must rule over it. Cain, still infuriated at God, asked Abel to follow him, where in anger and hate he killed the brother he had once loved so dearly. He looked at Abel's lifeless body as God spoke, What have you done? Your brother's blood cries to me from the earth. You are cursed to forever wander the earth. Cain begged him not to die, so God marked Cain so that no one would ever kill him. Banished from God's presence, just as his parents were, he wandered until he and his new wife had a child, Enoch. Cain spent decades building a city in his son's name that he would soon have to leave to continue wandering the earth forever. Meanwhile, Adam had fathered many children in his 930 years, but was finally coming close to death. As he prayed one final time for his family and for forgiveness, he passed. After ten generations, a son was born who would save humanity. He would be called Noah. Evil had spread through the land. Fallen angels, once in the presence of God, were deceived by the devil and thrown from heaven, had begun to corrupt everything on earth. They took the terrified human women to breed with them, creating the evil giants called Nephilim. The fallen angels had even began to corrupt the hearts of men, turning them into violent fiends. As evil spread, there was only one hope for humanity left. Noah. In the past 500 years, Noah had remained faithful to God, 
One day as he prayed, he heard God command him, I will bring a flood to destroy all flesh and evil. You are to build an ark. With time now passing, growing closer to the world's inevitable doom, Noah and his sons built the ark exactly as God had commanded them to, working tirelessly in the hopes of saving all life on earth. After 100 long years, they finally completed the ark. Just as storm clouds formed and the rains fell from the heavens, God had sent every animal two by two to enter the ark. Once they were all on board, God sealed them in. And after 40 days and 40 nights, it began. And just like that, everything and everyone was dead. They spent months drifting in the now lifeless waves. Noah told his sons legends of an ancient garden called Eden and the story of Cain. Months had gone by with no sign of land, so Noah sent out a dove, which returned with an olive branch, signaling that the waters had began to retreat. The ark crashed into something hidden beneath the waves. As the waters lowered, Noah saw they were caught on a mountain. With all of the animals on board still safe, God finally told Noah to open the doors. As they stepped into a new world, God promised Noah, Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. God's promise was symbolized by a rainbow. As Noah stood on Mount Ararat, he looked at the new world and knew. His story was just beginning. Thank you so much for watching. We're creating a full feature-length Bible movie told by AI. But we need your help to make it happen. If you'd like to support us, you can support us on Patreon. For business inquiries, please email us here. May God bless you all.